Okay, welcome. My name is Raggy Horner, and before we get started with our Super Saturday presentation, our big four-hour immersion webinar, I have to mention a few things, and that is the, uh, the Forex disclaimer. Trading in the off-exchange retail foreign currency market is one of the riskiest forms of investment available in the financial markets and suitable for sophisticated individuals and institutions. The possibility exists that you could sustain a substantial loss of funds and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. Nothing in this presentation is a recommendation to buy or sell currencies and Raggy Horner, myself, is not liable for any loss or damage including, without limitation, any loss of profit which may arise directly or indirectly from the use of Raggy Horner's tools or reliance on such information. Okay, so what are we here to talk about today? We are here to discuss a lot of what we've been talking about throughout this month of February. Market cycles, chart patterns, honestly, Forex trading in general, you know, we're, we're studying price. Um, I think that's where I think I'd like to start here today. And <clears throat> while I will talk about the wave and market cycles and market memory and look back, I'm also going to get more in-depth about risk management and trade management today, which is something we haven't really done a lot throughout the month and I'm also going to show you guys how I trade very short-term intraday okay so a lot of different topics some things that we have covered before some things we have not <clears throat> I don't want to get bogged down on any one topic because my hope is to cover a lot of information today and, and answer some questions as well so we will uh, we will go from there okay all right, so, you know, one thing I don't know that we talked a lot about, and I do, I do want to mention this for a few minutes, and this is definitely geared towards Forex newcomers. I'm not really, really sure uh, where everybody here in the room is in terms of their experience. I'm not going to assume that anybody's super advanced. I'm not going to assume that anybody is um, not a newbie. I mean, I don't know where you all are, but I have to present in a, in a way that I'm hoping I can reach the most people. So we're going to be talking about basic topics and advanced topics as well so um, kind of bear with me and realize there's probably I don't know two three hundred people in the room so we're trying to hit a good chord here <clears throat> alright so real basically I want to discuss one thing that we never talked about because and, and I'm not sure why I didn't bring it up because it's a really big deal to me okay and that is how tangible Forex is when I say that I mean how how real it is I don't want you all to ever forget what it is you're actually looking at when you're analyzing and possibly trading Forex. Okay, so in terms of what we're looking at, when you look at the price, and, and again, this might be basic, but I think it's something that the more we begin trading, we start to distance ourselves from it. When we look at the price of a pair, like the Euro US dollar, which is what we've got in a daily chart here in front of you right now, when we're looking at a chart like this, what are we looking at? Forget the candles and formations and patterns and cycles, all that kind of stuff. The price at 1.3614. What does that mean? That means for every one euro that I want, okay, if we fly, if we hop a plane in uh, New York right now and we land in Paris in, in seven or eight hours or whatever that flight is, and we have a pocket full of US dollars and we want to convert them into euros I need a dollar thirty six in US dollars to get one euro okay so a lot of you might be thinking right about now gosh we're we're, we're only about thirty six cents from parity compared to where we've been and a lot of people talk about this idea of parity and this might be something you're going to hear in the news and you might read on the web, and all that means, the word parity is one for one. I'm not saying we're heading there. We've been there before, by the way. I'm not saying we're heading there. We have a long way to go before we can be at parity. But you're going to hear that word probably more and more. And that's just con this idea of one unit of one currency worth exactly one unit of another, whether that be the U.S. dollar and the Canadian dollar, or like in this example, the U.S. dollar and the euro. Now, again, don't assume we're going to move down 36 cents because you know that's, it, while it might sound like very little, an actual coin 
in terms of chart movement, that's a very big move. That's a significant move. So you're going to, but you're going to hear that. So I wanted to just put that out there and make sure you're aware of the fact that a lot of people are projecting that the euro U.S. dollar is going to break a dollar, break 130, and possibly head down to 125. I also want to temper what I just told you with this. Foreign exchange is really getting a lot of press lately, and I could not be happier about that. You hear a lot about foreign exchange when people are talking about stocks and when people are talking about commodity futures and the world economy, and that's fantastic. But I just want to mention that while I'm sure the people that they put on the Internet and magazines and especially television, television is probably the biggest culprit, uh, well-meaning. I mean, these are well-meaning and, and very educated, and I think they're, for the most part, sincere, okay? But what I want to mention to you is this. Their job may be very different than what they're going to come and talk about on the television. So when someone throws out this idea of a market reaching a certain level, and they're projecting 125 on the euro, realize that you and I, as traders, know that there's a lot of obstacles, support levels, right? to the downside that we have to get past before we see such a level. I mean, 125 is way down here, right? Okay? So just remember that nothing moves directly from 136 to 125 as, as dramatic as they're going to make it sound. Remember, in the end, you have to make your own decisions. I cannot stress that enough. Nobody on television cares about you or your money. Nobody. Nobody cares more about your money than you. So whenever you hear about these other ideas that someone on television might be talking about, go look at your charts, go look at the way you analyze the market, go look at the time frames that you typically analyze, and make sure it makes sense for your risk-reward ratios. Okay? That's just my opinion, okay? But I think that this has to be something that everybody here is, is aware of and, and Make sure they kind of stand guard at the gate of your mind because there's going to be a lot more discussion, I feel, especially next week. You know, I'm kind of prepping you all for next week because there's going to be a lot of talk of the, of the bailout in Greece, what that means to the euro, how the ECB is going to respond, and then inevitably we're going to be talking about the other countries as part of that. I hate the word, but they use the word pigs, Portugal, Italy, right, Greece, and Spain. I guess that's the easiest way to put those, those three countries together. But, but anyways, you're going to hear a lot about that. Okay, so once they fix the G, Greece, uh, don't be surprised to hear a lot more about Spain. Okay, you're going to hear a lot about their debt and things like that. What I'm trying to say is when you hear these fundamental stories, try to digest as much of it as you can. I'm not saying to ignore them. But then whatever you feel is the overall opinion of that news. Is it a bullish piece of news? Is it a bearish piece of news? Start there. Okay, so once you've listened to it and you think you understand, is it bullish or bearish? Then go back to the pair that you feel is affected by this news. So once Greece's, Greece's bailout is determined and how and how much, and they start talking about the debt in Spain, start analyzing what people feel that overall opinion actually means and then see if the price action is confirming that. So even though I may not emphasize fundamentals a lot, and the reason for that is at any given time in the market there could be short-term and long-term fundamentals, there could be economic data, there could be speeches, there could be piece of fundamentals that people don't agree on. Like a lot of people right now, I'll give you a perfect example, a lot of people feel that the euro US dollar, the euro itself, weakening is great for Spain. A lot of people think that's very bullish for Spain because the lower a euro will allow them to to basically get out of debt faster. Some people think it's it's really actually quite bearish for Spain because they have a lot of exports and and uh, I'm sorry, I think it's actually very bullish for Spain because they have a lot of exports. Okay? And then you're going to hear the bearish aspect of all that as well. So some people think what's happening right now for Spain is all bullish because the exports, the lower euro is going to help them, the lower euro is going to help them get out of debt. 
My reasoning for getting into this detail is this is the kind of stuff you're going to be bombarded with every single day. And then you're going to go, well, is this what I should be thinking about when I'm trading? I'm not saying to ignore it, but what again I'm saying is determine if that piece of news or fundamental or that idea or whatever it is is bullish or bearish and then go back to the charts. Now what do you do when you go back to the charts?